Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Haunted PS1 Demo Disc 2020. And the first one in the lineup today is Neko Yumi. Neko Yumi is an ambient exploration game in which you traverse a cat-filled dream world. Wow, oh, that does sound like a dream world. Hmm. Day one, Cat Zero. I honestly cannot wait to see what this is about. Kinti? So that was just a cutscene. This is actually kind of reminding me a lot of LSD Dream Emulator. I wonder if there's some inspiration there. Having to go between the different days. Sometimes there's a cutscene, sometimes there's a 3D segment. Oh, and we move about with the arrow keys, not with the mouse. Uh, wait, how do I... What is this thing? And what are you? And what are what are all of you? There's some kind of sky fish cat bat. Yeah, this is this is most certainly inspired by LSD Dream Emulator. In fact, I think. Yeah, these mountains actually look exactly like the ones on a very similar map in the same game. The inspiration is so clear, it can't be denied. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, cat in the distance. Uh, maybe if I run into that, I'll get a cat added to my cat meter. Hello, cat. Uh, you're like a worm. Uh, like some kind of cat sandworm. Will you turn around when you reach the mountain, or will you phase right through it? You'll turn around. That looks like a turtle off in the distance. Let me guess, you're going to be a cat as well? <laughs> ah, this game is adorable, yet... and just a little bit weird at the same time. Ah, and just like LSD, when we touch something, we fade to white and move to the next area. Oh no. Is this going to be this game's interpretation of the violence district? The music at least seems a little bit more upbeat. Uh, but it's got the whole port city at night feel. What happens if I try... Uh, I'm almost tempted to try walking into that wall lit by the streetlight, but I want to explore this area some more. Hello? Ah, uh, your face is freaky. I uh, still want to adopt you, though. Now will I wake up with one cat? What happens if I try to enter the satanic cat door. Man, everything from the textures to the soundtrack to the cutscenes. If you had showed me footage of this, I would honestly believe that it was footage from LSD Dream Emulator. Uh, cat shopkeep. Can I buy anything from you? No. Even the archway is a cat. Oh, I, I think this is the same place, only now it's daylight. That's interesting. I'd never thought about what 
Oh, that ghost cat disappeared. I had never thought about what the violence district might look like during daytime. Uh, apparently nobody turns their lights out. Seems wasteful. What happens to this car if we follow it to the tunnel? Yeah, it phases right through. Uh, what if we try to follow it? Back here. I will try and retrieve this cat. Back here again. Yeah, this is kind of tough to commentate on. I don't really know what to say beyond it looks like LSD Dream Emulator, but everything is cats. I mean, I can't say I don't like it. It's always the more abstract games that I seem to have the hardest time commenting on. Day three, cats one. I'm going to imagine that the one cat that I got was the transparent one underneath the streetlight. This is the location that we saw before, but now it's taken on a reddish tint. The cat shopkeep from before has left his post. It's almost like the world is slowly deteriorating. Although the Violence District XP kind of did that in reverse, didn't it? I wonder if my progress is tied to retrieving cats? Or if it's tied to the progression of days? Hang on, there's something down that way. Oh, it's Railing Cat again! Maybe we can pick it up now! Ah, oh, no. It always disappears as we get close. Oh no, it's a cat kaiju! I've always wanted to go out like this. Okay, what if we... Uh, are you going to start walking? Can we actually wait for you to get to shore? It's almost here. Oh, and Ghost Cat is back. Perhaps it was waiting for this for a long time. Look at the gradient on the sky. Out of all of the ones I've played so far, I feel like this is the one that most feels like a complete PS1 game. In terms of the resolution and the movement. And the, just the look of everything. The way the models are done, the way the textures wrap around these low-poly models. Now the question is, should I wait for you to complete your rampage or should I run into your... Legs, okay. It looks like the decision was made for me in the end. Let's keep going, I guess. Yeah, I always have difficulty commenting on these more abstract games. Which isn't to say I don't really enjoy them or find them an absolute bounty of inspiration. I just don't know what to say. Because when I'm giving commentary, I try to keep things... In, in, in such a way that they sort of tell a story, even if a story isn't being told. And with things like this, it, it's almost... It, you can barely call it stream of consciousness. Now one thing that has been kind of consistent, though, is all of the exits to areas, instead of just being a closed loop like most maps in LSD, there actually are blocked off, conspicuous, in inaccessible areas. Oh my. Hey, it might just be the way the textures are done, but it almost is giving the illusion that it's, like, bigger on the inside. Seems like we're just going back and forth between the same two or three areas. And perhaps there's more cats for us to locate. Shiphorn? Gotta be more cats somewhere, right? Ah, 
How does one go about locating more cats? And what's my motivation for doing so? I mean, not that you need a motivation to go see cats, but... Come on. Another wall with graffiti on it. Maybe if I try going through here? No, wait. I want to go through the cat wall. Cat wall. And here's some place we haven't seen before. Oh, we're truly in cat world now. Not that I'm complaining. Oh wait, no. Oh wow, it's gone even further in emulating LSD and had actual retextures to environments we've already seen. Now, the one burning question I've still got is what is it with these white textured cat-shaped symbols that keep appearing? What do you do? Now this is something we haven't seen before. Is this what Carl Sagan was talking about when he gave his pale blue dot speech? Uh, forget Earth though, I want to go to Cat Planet. Unless that's already where I've been. You think I could make that jump? I'd probably just burn up during re-entry in the Catosphere. This looks kind of like that entrance uh, to that monument with the staircase going down, but this one is not blocked. Let's head on in and see where it takes us. The cat signal? Back here? But why? It's almost like we were- Oh, I get it, there is a direct connection. We were being beamed up to space. Alright. I mean, much like LSD, I imagine you could really speculate on just how random the nature of the teleports is. Yep, because the same entryway takes us right back here. What's around the corner? Hmm. It's the Cat Museum. Kinti? Kinti? Kitty? Kitty? I'm a kitty. Sorry, I have to do this every time I see a cat. Do I want to interact? Okay, starting to move more into the realm of creepy now. But I phase right through it, it's not an actual interactable object. Maybe the bed is? We're back where we started, but the texture changes remain. Uh, what happens if we try crossing the water? We can wade right over it. Hello? Can I interact with you? Or no, I want to interact with the guy behind you, never mind. Oh, I didn't even get to take a step forward. And it has been one week, and I have only achieved one cat. 
I'll be honest, I don't know if there's like a limit on this, if it's going to stop me at a certain day, or if eventually it'll just end. But it does have a save load system. Seems night has once again fallen on this district. Oh no, it's coming right for me. The world's slowest car. Let's head over to the pier. I, I think the thing I'm most interested in right now... Also, I just realized these uh, little structures are getting taller. The thing I'm most interested in right now is what's the deal with the transparent cat that hangs out by the docks? That vanishes when I get closer. Maybe if I try interacting with the object it was standing on? This time it spawned us directly in front of Shopkeep. That pathway is still closed. And the orange hue of the sky has now been reduced to more of a rusted brown. But if you look up there, oh, there's actually more connection to this than I thought. Because if you look up there, there's the beam on the rooftop platform that took me up to the space elevator. Okay, so there is probably a definitive way to find your way around this dream world. What happens if I allow myself to get hit by the car? Absolutely nothing. Alright, let's try the dumpsters then. This one appears to be floating. I think we've been here before, but I have not seen this ramp leading up into the mountains. What do we find up here? Anything that gets us higher up. Oh, this is the top of the waterfall. I wonder if we can ride it down. Uh, no such luck, it seems. Oh my, you rose right up through me, you're weird looking. Yeah, that one looked less like a cat than some of the other cats I've seen. I think this might be, is, is this the first time we've seen a night sky over this area? And I still haven't figured out what these things are. Let's try interacting with the bottom of the waterfall and see what happens. I don't know if that'll just count as an interaction with the wall. Oh, we're in that little library area that's underneath the building that the sky beam is on. Only now there's no sky beam. It's just the sun and moon up there, if you can call them that. What is that? Oh, it's another archway. God, I was super terrified that that thing was going to come walking towards me. Alright, last time attempting this. What happens if I try walking directly into the shopkeep? Oh, we're back here. Oh, it's still not going to let us walk down this catwalk. Well, that's ten days and still only one cat. No idea what more I'm meant to do with that. Alright, so I'm going to end this part here because... Honestly, for as wild and weird as that is, I have very little to say about games that are, like, truly insanely abstract. I will say, though, I really like just how true of an effort it is to recreate the feeling of LSD Dream Emulator. I mean, like I said before, if you had just showed me footage of this with no context, I would assume it was all just areas that I hadn't seen before. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, I was wondering when we were gonna get to the horror. Being trapped in a dreamland surrounded by cats honestly sounds like heaven to me. Uh, but the next one is Dread Delusion and the Clockwork God's Realm, where state-approved magic is regulated by machines. A dark corruption is taking hold. A small-scale, open-world RPG. <laughs> okay. Well, I asked for different, and I'm getting different. I don't think we've seen anything like this so far. This is a timed demo. For early access, visit the Patreon. Ooh. Now, I remember these. So, on the old PS2 demo discs, some demos would be, you know, modified versions of existing levels and would run out when you finish them, and others were on a timer, usually about half an hour. So I guess we'll start a save. Not that I expect to be saving and loading much in our limited time. Oh, this is really cool looking. This is kind of like mist, or... Wait, why is this room looking so familiar to me? You know what I think it is? I, I, I think this looks a lot like the... Like the church from the latter half of No One Lives Under the Lighthouse. It is eerie how similar it looks. Alright, well, we're on a timer. Let's move forward. What are you? Uh, certainly a very unique aesthetic they've gone for here. Story. You stand before an avatar of the Clockwork God. It makes abysmal sounds as it connects to the network of machines and magic spread throughout the city. You shift uneasily while you wait. You have no idea why you're here. Being called before an avatar in person is rarely a good thing. So, whatever this thing is, I I've been summoned specifically? The mechanical anatomy shudders and grinds for some time sputtering oil and steam. Abruptly, it stops. Just as you wonder if it's broken, a feather stylus pops out and writes in large, angular letters. You are subject to number... CXLII, confirm, deny. Sure. I honestly don't know if I'm lying or not. Your data requires amending. State your vocation. You clear your throat. Oh, I see. It's a character creation screen. Uh, we can be a petty enforcer or a scribe. I feel like I'm more like a scribe. You explain how you toil in the Towers of Happiness each day. Oh no, they really do have the wrong person. Writing glorious visions of the sacred city in rhyming verse. The best work is sent to the higher-ranking cipher scribes to be turned into intoxicating visions and sent abroad. So I'm like... a scriptwriter? You do not mention how everything you write is a lie. How the city is dying, with more corrupt citizens being dragged to their deaths each day. And you dare not write the truth. The machine scrawls. Data amended. You have gained a delusion of mind. Huh, so this is like a starting point system. And you know, something that's really interesting is it seems like it's making these mechanical slash magical combinations out of technologies that we actually have, such as TV and internet. In a way, this is almost like kind of a defamiliarization of the world we all know. You have been selected for the sacramental duty. I'm sorry, you can probably hear the loud whistling from the wind through my window. Uh, your heart lurches as you read the quickly drying ink. You do not know what the sacramental duty is. Only that those who are chosen never return. Sounds like every job I've ever done. The sacramental duty is as follows. To find the source of the realm's pestilence which putrefies the soul and makes rotten the harvest, and to forever bring an end to this corruption. Failure will result in death by incineration. 
chances of success are calculating none sounds fair may the blessing of the clockwork god be with you please exit via the portal <laughs> Uh, an avatar, an avatar of the machine god seems suspiciously like, like a like a receptionist. Well, down the golden elevator we go. Uh, is this like some kind of a shared universe with Ode to a Moon? This looks very much like when we climbed up that. When we climbed up that hill into the destroyed ruins that had no right being there. Either that, or, as I theorized during that video, we've crossed through an oblivion portal. Hello? What do we have here? Another outcast from. Aw, oh, you're mean. Tell me. Has your god cast you away to die? <laughs> yes. <laughs> At least you recognize the absurdity of that place. Since your people came and built that abomination, this land has been slowly rotting. So I'll be keeping an eye on you, outcast. Uh, okay. You know, surely it's because of the PS1 graphics, but... Yes, band in the sky? Uh, based on your PS1 graphics, you actually kind of remind me of the Poltergeist guy. I can't remember his name from the uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone PC game. Okay, so we can sprint. It uses stamina, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, getting very strong vibes of... Almost like Morrowind meets Shivering Isles from this. Uh, <laughs> nice job on those roads, dudes. Oh, wow, there's like a whole town to explore. Of course, the way my gamer instincts are taking me is to cross that bridge and try to see what's in the big castle, but... Uh, I kind of feel like maybe I should explore a little more, get into the nooks and crannies. This looks like another one of those teleporters. Uh, before I commit to that, because I don't know if I'll be able to come back... I saw that ghost further up the road a ways. The town of Hallow. My people were never allowed past its walls. Your people as in the place you come from, or your people as in ghosts? We natives have been here since the world forging. But even as we starved, this town kept us out. And in the end... When its people writhed in strange agonies, they locked it up and discarded the key in that tower up there. Uh... Okay, well, that's real convenient. I guess you can't interact with physical objects or else you'd be able to get it yourself, but then again, what do you even need a key for? Can you not phase through solid materials? Alright, well, let me go get it for you and... Tear down that wall. Okay, there's a lot of things going on in here. Not the least of which I recognize as a key. Maybe... Ah, uh, there it is. Town quarantine key. Well, that was easy. Key allowing entry into the town of Hallow. When the corruption reached the town, it was, shield, it was sealed shut and its people left to perish. Uh, what about in the book? Divine order log. The town of Hallow is lost. Yesterday, the screams rising from the streets terrified me. But now, the silence is so much worse. Could we have prevented this? If we'd punished more insubordination? Rewritten more lives with Cypher? What do you mean, rewritten more lives? Yes, surely. The Clockwork God and His Divine Grace will judge our methods defective. I locked the quarantine door and sealed the last of them in. What more could I do? Now, I, I want to call attention to something they've done with the writing here that I really, really like. 
rewritten more lives with the cipher? Yes, surely. And that's it. It's actually writing in a voice that speaks as someone living in this world, not as someone who's trying to explain things to an outsider, which a lot of games that explain things via notes tend to get wrong. I actually consider it a form of lazy writing when notes that have just been randomly left about not only were written seemingly for no reason, but are written addressed to the player. Tower has sustained significant damage. Would you like to engage automatic repairs? Without understanding a single thing? Sure. Upgrades are disabled in the demo. Have a nice day. What a tease. Ah! <laughs> I can never help but laugh when I get jump scared by a skeleton. Saving disabled in this demo. Please exit via the portal. I like how the avatar of the machine god is the one who delivers that message. Okay, so these in the full game would function as save points. Yup, I got your key. Can I let you in now? Yep, same thing as before. Alright, and open we go. You coming in? You kind of made it seem like this was a historic moment for you and your people. No? Well, you know where to find me. Oh, that's like an LOD thing. Clever. Oh, this world is so nice looking. You know, I, I feel like this is one of the... One of the games that has more of a right to utilize these PS1 style graphics. And, you know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like the reason for that is because of the visual callbacks to games like Myst and and Morrowind. I mean, these are graphics that I feel like they just wouldn't feel the same if they were presented in modern style. What is this? Homespell returns the caster to Hallow, but at the cost of an affliction. Now, I don't know what an affliction means in the context of this game, but that sounds like something I would want to lose. With nothing equipped, select with control, then hold right mouse button to cast. Okay, so it's like a home teleport. What say you, Avatar of the Machine God? Subject number... Eh. Your presence here was predicted. Do you seek help with the sacramental duty? Man, if you could help me with the sacramental duty, why didn't you do that from the beginning when you gave me the job? I leave this... or no, leave this town. Seek the cipher scribe in his tower past the river. He will direct you further. Seek the cipher scribe in his tower past the river. Okay, where's the river? I found it! <laughs> oh, way to startle me, music. Oh, look at that airship. You know, I really like the style here where they've combined sort of Industrial Revolution era machinery with magic, but sort of applied modern concepts to them, things like broadcasting and mass communication. And in the end, the result of that is I find myself looking at everything, trying to figure out which of the three it is that's powering it. That airship... I mean, look, it's made of wood and metal. It should be way too heavy to fly, but it seems to be propelled by magic. But I can't tell if those round things in the back... If those are also moving gears, so anything... Anything may also be a combination of the three. What are you? Potion of Stamina? Excellent. Uh, as, as the selected item, with Alt, and then press R to use. Okay, I gotta find a key. I'm kind of rushing a little bit more than I should be, because I don't know how long this demo is going to last. I at least want to make my way to that tower, certainly, right?
what a what a pretty soundtrack to make wandering between areas such a delight. This music and that sky and this landscape, it all really comes together to sort of create an air of this beautiful but dying world. Ah, this game is a breath of fresh air after not really knowing what to say in the previous one, e even though it's visually sort of similar. Ooh, what are you? <laughs> you pilfered one coin. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think pilfered is the right word. I mean, I am a video game protagonist. I always just assumed it would be cool. This door requires a key. Keys, keys, keys. That's all I ever hear about anymore. I'm glad I took a break from this, actually. I mean, I know, those of you who are waiting for this, it's probably very frustrating how long it's been between parts. Especially as you were just waiting for me to bang out these last few games, but... You know, it, it really does make all the difference to... You know, when I'm fatigued, to come back refreshed. A friendly face. Thank the clockwork god. Uh, you don't seem to be in such good shape, friend. I was thrown from my airship. One of those- Oh no! You know what? We're coming back. We're gonna get a little bit more out of this. Uh... So, I've come back to try and gain more time, but... In the dead city, I've encountered... Whatever this guy is, I don't remember seeing you before. Can I interact with you? Are you... Oh, I think it's actually draining my health a little bit to be near you. It's kind of hard to tell. I is this what happens to victims of whatever is happening to this world? It's literally like four pixels, but... I think I just saw another one of those skeleton guys in the distance. Apparently, brigands and thieves have taken control of the tavern in Hallow. They're selling an array of spoils looted from this chaos. Here. Our spy found a way in. Kill them, make merry with them. I don't care anymore. I failed. My data will be erased from the esteemed archives. In the end, it was just as its grace pred predicted. How often do you see the word data in a fantasy RPG? Oh, it really is such a unique collision of worlds in the premise they've gone for here. Okay, uh, I have circumvented the river, which means I gotta go over here and see if I can't find the scribe I was sent to look for. Let me guess. Locked? Oh, no. As you clasp the door handle, your head throbs. Your vision blurs, and a bitter taste rises in the back of your throat. Telltale signs of an illusion taking hold. You're still atop a hill with the sacred city in the distance. But now, the neuron star burns golden in a blue sky above a glittering multitude of machine towers. Skyships ferry grain and goods overhead, propelled by faultless cipher magic. You recognize this as Realm Commissioned Propaganda, a utopic vision to draw colonists here from the Old Kingdoms. I just had, like, some kind of religious vision, and you're telling me that it's basically an ad? A machine knight towers over you. The voice emanating from its sealed helmet is shrouded in static. State your business. It leans closer. You're not from the Divine Order, are you? Lie. Claim that you are, in fact, from the Divine Order. Or say that you are tasked with the sacramental duty. 
Now I like that it actually puts Y in parentheses because we've just been thrown into this and so, you know, some games, I played a game a while back called like, This is the Police, and in the beginning, you're, you're meant to give a statement and you can tell the truth or lie, but the problem is, we don't know what the lie is. Uh, but I'm wasting time. I'm gonna tell the truth. A sigh crackles through the air. You are not the first to have come here with that burden. Not the last, I suspect. Its head tilts upwards towards the fake blue sky. I could help you. But I want something first. It points an armored finger at a tower in the distance. Ah, you're like the fourth person that's done this. That tower, with the bridge over the river, is a Divine Order prison. My assistant scribe was taken there. A pause. She's surely dead, but the filtrate extractor she carried... I need it urgently. That's probably the scribe I was sent to look for. Your body tingles as the illusion fades. The blue drains from the sky. The tower crumbles to dust, or the towers crumble to dust, and the machine knight is gone. Uh, you know, I'm not really a huge fan of fantasy, but this is really, it's crafting a world in very few words that I'm really interested to learn more about. There's just something with the way that things are described, with the way the dialogue is written, that, I, I don't know, it feels more real than others that I've played. Like, it's not something that just exists entirely for my benefit, it's actually something that I'm a part of. I mean, years ago, I was, like, super, super into Oblivion, and to a lesser extent, I played a bit of Skyrim, and it's... You know, those games, while cool, while fun, I, I always felt that they kind of treated you too much as the main character, no matter what path you decided to take. With this, I, I don't know, it all just feels a little bit more... I don't want to say real, but more authentic. Oddly enough, more authentic in its extreme fantasy. Alright, can we get in here now? No. Okay, we've taken the roundabout way to get back up here. Which I could have done from quite a few minutes ago. I wasted a lot of time doing that. Uh, scribe? Oh, by the way, the door was open. It should have been very easy to escape. And I got the filtrate exp extractor? Uh, this contraption looks quite complex. You haven't the slightest clue what it might do. The cipher scribe in his strange tower would probably be interested in this. Fine order log, blah blah blah, detainee, subject, vocation, junior cipher, scribe, misconduct, in possession of literature, no permit, disciplinary action, splitting of the knees, crushing of the head. Uh, I'm sure she's fine. With the sword and strength, this would break. I could actually break into that room. <laughs> There's a spooky skeleton in there as well. Hello, uh, you seem to be blocking my path there. What do you want? I must admit, for someone so hopeless, you're tenacious. But let me warn you, this strangeness that plagues the land, this corruption, it's not what you think. Attacking it with brute force is idiotic. If you really want to help, there are other ways. Come find me. We can speak. Otherwise, you're on your own. And then you're truly ducked. Did I just autocorrect myself? DoorDash. The illusion takes hold of you again. Suddenly, the machine knight stands below a crisp blue sky, with impossible spires glittering in the distance. You hold up the strange device you found at the tower. Yes, yes, nods the machine knight. That's it. Come upstairs. We'll speak in person. 
the illusion vanishes with a shiver, leaving a crimson sky. You pass into the tower and up its dark stairway. Entering the top chamber is like stepping onto a turbulent ship. The whole room, full of strange apparatus, periodically turns on the spot, shaking everything with a furious rattle. Ah, oh, this really paints a picture. Automated telescopes peer through a gaping window, watching the shifting horizon. Man, do you even need a telescope for this? A scribe is hunched over an array of ink bottles, which spill their glowing liquid whenever the room lurches. The figure turns to face you, weary eyes buried in a gaunt face. Don't touch anything, he mutters. It's the voice of the Machine Knight. So much feebler now. Ask for his help with the sacramental duty. I should give the extractor first, even though I don't know what it does. You produce the device, and his eyes widen with glee. That's it! Put it here. Carefully. Carefully. He immediately pours a viscous substance into the machine, which sputters and shakes for a few moments. A door springs open to reveal a steaming mug of something takes a sip. My special design of filtered tea, he says calmly. I've been lost without it. Take this. You have gained two coins. My favorite thing about this so far is how it differentiates between gained and pilfered. More RPGs need to do this. A scribe is hunched over an array of- okay, we already read this. Ask for help with the sacramental duty. As you explain your task, the scribe gazes away, seemingly lost in thought. According to the clockwork god, he says finally, the corruption has a single source, located past the great gate. But the gate is tainted. It no longer answers to the living, only the corrupted souls that wander here. Building an army, maybe? If you kill enough of those strange ghosts and collect their protoplasm... Ah, oh, we were just getting into Ghostbusters. All right, well, I'm done for real this time. Explore three distinct zones, each brimming with stories and secrets. Wield powerful spells and potions to unlock hidden areas or vanquish the undead. Collect, trade, and upgrade buy and sell at cities, and upgrade your home. Oh, that, even that was on a timer. Uh, so that was Dread Delusion, and that was really quite cool. I don't know, I mean, normally I'm totally bored to tears by fantasy, but there's just something about the dialogue, the voice that the game speaks in, that really drew me in, and I'd definitely be interested in trying out more. Maybe not on this channel, but I might play it on my own time. Next up, Dead Heat. Dames, lies, murder mystery, and zombies in the twilight years of the 21st century. Hmm, so, okay, there's a lot going on in that. So it's like a noir mystery bright type of situation? Okay, I gotta see this. Hmm. The selection screen kind of reminds me of old-style adventure flash games. Uh, name Sonia Vargas, age 29, detective level 3. Sonia is a talented liar and highly persuasive woman with a keen sight into the hearts of men. Her detective skills are formidable, though physically unimposing. Lilith Troy... Born March 18th, 2014, human age 18, zombie age 68. Uh, Detective Class 3, Lilith is a seasoned and streetwise hunter zombie with a high sense of self-confidence. She relishes any chance to use her unnatural abilities to intimidate others. Huh, so it really is like a bright situation. 
All right, we'll go with Sonya. Uh, I guess we'll go for a dirty cop. You don't mind getting a little dirty to get what you need, and your reputation for blackmail and extreme measures precedes you. Yeah, that seems to match with the description we were given. Honest folk will see you as trouble, while some in the underground understand you know the score. I think that's what you want to be. About 20 minutes ago, I got another wake-up call from our kind boss, Saul. I barely had time to cover myself up before I was being stared down by a sweaty, bloated face on a blinding video phone monitor. Sol decided that we were in the right after all, and pulled our No, you gotta let me read it! All he gave us to go on was a description of a corpse, now more asphalt than man, laying comfortably somewhere in Hell's Kitchen. So here we are again. Another cold alleyway in the dead of autumn, another corpse, and another reason to get out of this line of work. If there's one thing I know in this life... It's to never late wake Lilith up for anything unless it's important. Uh, blah, 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 and uh, blah, blah, I should see how she's doing. Okay. Hello? Oh, I'm in control. That's us down on the bottom. You know, it's weird. Now that I see that those are our models, and it looks like this other model is going to follow me, there's actually a little bit of... A disconnect in the art. It looks like a slightly different style from the character models, a little bit more ps one ified than the characters themselves. That's kind of interesting. I wonder if it's actually using the old technique of using fixed cameras and pre-rendered backgrounds to get better performance. Or at least emulating that for the PS1 look. Now, one big criticism right out of the gate, timed dialogue. Which, it might be fast enough to read, but it's not fast enough to read aloud, because you want to read it with a certain cadence, or else it doesn't really sound good to listen to. Alright, well, let's try talking to my partner first thing. Wow, these controls are actually a little bit floaty and a little bit hard to get used to. How are you feeling? I'm a little surprised Soul had such a forgiving heart. Must say, it's the shortest suspension I've ever been on. I wonder why he would bring us out so quick. Oh, come now, Lily. Sol needs us more now than he wants to admit. Because of the manpower shortages? Among other short-sighted things. Regardless of the new commissioner's moral posturing speeches, there's a need for people like us. People like us? <laughs> what do you mean, you people? People who are willing to take that one step further to ensure those who need to be brought in are brought in with enough evidence to shepherd them to the gas chamber. Okay, that started off really morally righteous and sort of sort of tapered off towards the end, but I like the spirit. Why I say the new commissioner is too short-sighted and brash. Eh, got us our jobs. Only because it desperately lowered the entry requirements. And what did it get them but more of what they callously filled in with those who actually were corrupt and impure? Now, we aren't like them. No, we aren't. But as far as Soul is concerned, we're becoming too much like them. I'm more than happy to drag them around on a case with us. Show them how the world really works. We're burning time. Come on, let's see what Bishop's found. Now, criticism aside, I am excited to be playing another adventure game in this style. I think there's only been one so far, and that was Heartworm. Yep, here's the corpse. The view in front of me was something all too familiar. One more bum checking out of reality. The blood on the floor indicated multiple lacerations from glass punctures. This guy's been bleeding out for a long time. Glenn Bishop, what have you to say? Made a new friend? Didn't expect to see you back so soon. I suppose we're too valuable to throw away for clout. It wasn't for clout. Those men needed to go. And now you have us. How things have changed. Tell us about the zombie. 32 years old in human years, roughly 64 in zombie. Well, oh, come on! That wasn't even enough time to read. Scans show the fall shattered most of his rib cage. Glass has dug itself deep into the organs and punctured his lungs in several different places. I would wager that the glass was weakened before he was thrown through. So repeated impacts? 
CSI still poking around up there? They just left. Photographed everything up there, but couldn't stick around to give you the normal walkthrough. Something called them downtown. They said that they'll have a report on your desk, hopefully, by the end of the night. We'll head up there, then. You okay with Mr. Bryant? I suppose I should show you two around the apartment. Let's go. Okay, I guess I've got to find the way in now. Can I sprint? I cannot. I am stuck at walk speed. Unless there's a different control for it. I would wager the only doors illuminated by the big spotlight underneath the conspicuously broken window is probably the way I'm supposed to go. Not exactly a penthouse, is it? You two check around back. I'll stay here and check the glass pattern. Remember, if you find anything physical, check it over once you have it. You never know what you might find. Alright, so we are in the investigation phase. You know, I really like investigative games, and I, I wish there'd be more sort of in the genre of the Pain Screen Killings. That was a game that uh, I would have loved to have played that on the channel, but unfortunately that's the kind of thing you can only play once. Now that, now that I know what happens, it wouldn't really be the same. Hmm. Looks like one of those matchbooks from Lilith's time. Keepsake from his old life, maybe? Ah, uh, that's right. They did say that this was a zombie, so his... So his actual age differs from his physical age. Glenn Bishop? I, I thought that was like a little statuette or something sitting on top of the lamp, but I think that's him... I think that's his model being displayed through the foreground. And he's actually crouched over by the window. What happens if we select him? Nothing. Sad. Let's try investigating the TV. Hmm. The Immortal Murderer, Night of the Cannibals, Explosion Fighter 5, Double Extremism. Nice collection. Doesn't seem to be anything particularly useful or selectable, though. I'm going to be real annoyed if this turns into one of those classic adventure game pixel hunts. Uh, this place is much bigger than it looked like from the first camera view. Uh, anything notable in the paper? Can't even look at it. What about the kitchen? There's got to be something here we can have a look at, right? Oh, the guy's got a computer. Got to be something useful here, right? Ooh, we can actually interact with it. Uh, the RP Quantum Terminal, blah, blah, blah. Please make your selection. Uh, emails. Emails? Okay, no emails today. QNet. Okay, no QNet today. So why even let me interact? Shut down? Hmm, QNet and emails are sealed off. I wonder who he got into... I wonder who he got in to do that? I'm having trouble parsing the syntax there. Alright, so somebody came up here and I guess did something with his computer terminal, with his online profiles? Uh, hello? I walked over here for like two seconds and now the camera view won't change. Okay, now it changes. Yeah. These controls are really, really difficult to get used to. Like, it's very slidey, very tank-like, it's... Ugh. Uh, stop switching the cameras, because... See, when it switches the camera angle, it switches... It switches what direction the key that I'm currently pressing pushes me in. Oh, but that's kind of cool. That mirror is actually reflective. I really fill out this outfit. Yeah. Uh, but as I was saying before, something interesting that this game has gone for aesthetically is that it's set presumably in like the 2070s or something like that, but it's got a real 80s vibe to it. It actually, you know, it's reminding me a lot of Blade Runner. A safe? Well, this is interesting. It certainly is, but I don't know how you expect me to open it. Uh, Lilith, you're... 
You were doing a weird thing just there. But try and try and hold that butt because it might be useful. Anyway, let's look at the safe. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to figure this out from the information I have on hand. Oh, there we go. We have an inventory. Uh, we can look at our notepad. Oh, no, this is the... That's not a notepad. That's the matchbox. And written inside, it says... It's time. Uh, can we rotate this at all? No, it doesn't seem like we need to. Uh, oh, space to interact. And we got a single match, but what do I do with that? Oh, this game is confusing me so much. Alright, I guess we'll go see what's going on over by the window then. Actually, the environments... They almost look like there's, like, video compression being applied. I've talked before about how it's really interesting how these different games look very different from each other, and yet they're all doing different things to try and imitate the same style. This... It actually almost looks like it's compressed FMV footage. Alright, what do we got here in the broken glass? I should get some blood for Bishop. CSI's been getting a bit sloppy lately. I'll say! They said that CSI's already come and gone. If they didn't collect the glass and blood samples, they are truly incompetent at their job. Like, why are they even on payroll? Question is, how do I take blood samples? Oh, I see. There's, uh, that's clever. That's actually, there's different slots for different types of evidence. So we have physical, which would be the matchbook. Suspects, we don't have any. No audio, but, but here we have IOT. I don't know what that stands for, but I still haven't found what it is that I'm meant to find in this apartment that's going to tie all this together. Yeah, when I get close to walls, it definitely starts to feel more like the characters are superimposed onto a pre-rendered background. Ah, we can click on that document on the desk. Memorandum. To Leon Bryant. I'm writing this message to you to remind you of the severe penalty penalties regarding the misplacement of security passes. These are in place to ensure your safety and the safety of everyone else at NYX Pharmaceuticals. The loss of your security pass has endangered you and your co-workers. As this is your first infraction, you will be issued this warning. Repeat infractions will see you, your pay reduced for the month, and further infractions will see your employment contract ended. You will be issued your replacement card in the next three weeks. We advise all employees to store their cards in secure and memorable locations around their homes. Please ensure to take every possible measure to keep this replacement safe. There's a note scribbled on the back. Give matchbook to Matt when the time comes. He'll know what the code is. Remind him the last two numbers are my real age. Well, whatever he was waiting for, he never got to deliver that matchbox. And the last two numbers are his real age, which I believe was 68 or thereabouts. I wonder if there's a place I can look that up. Okay, so we left and came back. Now Bishop is no longer standing by there. I found out if you hold down control, you can actually sprint, which I'd known that before. But I'm no closer to figuring out what it is that I need. I unfortunately am all out of time for this one. I, I spent a lot of time looking around trying to figure out what I was supposed to do, and I, I just can't piece things together. And there are certain things that I, I feel like are pieces of the puzzle, but, like, technical issues are getting in the way. I mean, I like the idea of this game. It's got a great look. It's got a pretty interesting premise, the way it combines elements of all these different genres. Also notable in that I'm pretty sure this is the only one in the collection I've played so far that actually makes use of pre-rendered backgrounds. Which is really, really interesting to me to see it done like this. If nothing else, though, it's certainly succeeding at being nostalgic of those early adventure games. Actually, right when they made the transition to 3D. It's kind of like, you know what? It reminds me of Sam and Max. Right down to having a follower. I have appear to have wandered off camera again. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, now in part two, I had skipped two of the games because I played through them and I just didn't really find that they were horror at all. 
I didn't think they really fit into what I was expecting from these games. And to be honest, I don't think that's really fair of me. I think I should be taking each of these games as they come and just see them for what they are. I feel like I shouldn't be only playing games if they fit into a sort of narrow view of what I consider to be horror. I think it's really weird to just leave out two games and so I'm gonna go back and play them. Unfortunately, I don't still have the footage from when I played them before, because that was part of part two and that was like a 90 gig file. I wish I had kept it because I did do full commentary for both of them the first time around. I'm just saying this so that you understand that I'm going in with the mindset of having seen both of these games already. A narrative adventure about mice, fat cats, and the never-ending quest for Cheddar. Don't I know it. It's the middle of no light, and you've just been rudely awakened by your landlord demanding an, an exorbitant amount of rent. You don't have the cheddar to cover it, so you've gone into the nearby neighborhood in search of odd jobs to scrounge up crumbs. And here we are. Now as you can see, this is a very gorgeous world. As you probably guessed, we're playing as a little mouse in a little mouse society. And from that perspective, the grass looks like a tall forest. I don't know what kind of tiny mouse we are that the grass is this tall. Maybe it's an overgrown lawn, or maybe it's not meant to be a lawn at all. But in any case, what we're going to find is that there is a whole mouse society down here. But we don't have time to worry about the complexities of the system. we got to go earn ourselves some cheddar so we can pay our rent. As you can see, the models are quite, uh, grotesque. Sorry, I just said that to your face, Barkeep. It kind of reminds me, actually, of, uh, Watership Down. The hefty mouse behind the bar looks you up and down, their paw rapidly spinning a bolt of cloth inside a thimble. Hmm, hi there. I haven't seen you around here before. Surely you didn't just wander in from the trail. What if I did? I'd be fairly impressed. Not many a mouse is able to avoid those roving packs of feral beasts. Best to keep the cordoned off zones, where we know the fat cats are able to ensure our safety. Have you been out there? Gods no. How do you know it's dangerous? I've been told as much, and I don't go around questioning an entity as all-knowing as fat cats. Look, is there something you need? Got any crumbs? Ah, uh, just what I like to hear. A mouse motivated to work. I mean, assuming you're looking to work for those crumbs. What do you need done? Well, we have a bit of a roach problem in the cellar. They're quite huge. It would probably take a skilled sword's mouth to fell one. So that rules you out. But I got something more your speed. A letter that needs to be delivered. Are you familiar with Nine Lives? What's that? Really? It's the biggest chain owned by Fat Cats. You've definitely seen one at some point. They're everywhere. At any rate, there's one just further down the path there. That's where you're going. Take this letter and give it to the cashier. And I was given the mysterious letter. They'll be the ones to pay you. Don't listen to any pleas they come up with. They're a rampant liar. What'd they do? Nothing. Deliver the letter and don't open it. Trust me. Just hand that over and you'll get something nice in return. Let me know when it's taken care of. Stay safe out there. Yeah, clearly doesn't want me asking too many questions. I find it so adorable how the glasses are little thimbles. That is so cute. Oh, and that's, uh, that's one of those little tin candles. Oh, and the tables are spools of thread! Uh, I'm glad I'm replaying this because I'm noticing details that I didn't before. Barfly. Hey there! You're that new mouse round here, right? The one that does whisker deliveries? I've seen you out there now and then doing deliveries. Just like me. Is that your side gig? Yeah, it's my hustle. 
Not quite. Oh, my friend. <laughs> There's no shame in it. I'm a cog just like you. I know your pain all too well. We're comrades out there. The everlasting chase for Cheddar. It's so fruitless. I could use some help. What's up? I'm being evicted. Oh, really? Me too. Let's be friends. Oh, we have so much in common. We're already co-workers. I hate that, though. Whisker is terrible. Just another dumb fat cat's initiative cooked up to fellow Humi trends. Follow Humi trends. So they are aware of humans. That yeah, pays the bills. Not enough, apparently. Not like you have much of a choice anyway. Hardly any jobs out here, much less anything hiring. It's nice, not having to work at one of those stupid shops like Nine, Nine Lives, but I don't know how good that really is. All I do day in and day out is sprint up and down the trail, handing richer mice food they can afford for scraps and crumbs off the top. I don't have to stop unless I wanna, which is really good, but also... It's not like I have to go out there. No one's making me. And no one cares about me out there. It's lonely. I miss camaraderie. I had a tumble the other week while I was running a delivery. Fell down a hillside. Steep. Really messed me up. Bounced off some rocks on the way down. Had a hard time walking, and the doc I saw told me it was going to cost a good hunk of cheddar to fix me up. I didn't really have much stowed away, because I'm barely making crumbs anyway, you know? You can't save on that pittance. Plus, after paying for the checkup, I can barely afford to eat. And now I couldn't get going to make more money, because my job relies on me being able to run all over the place. I tried to reach out to Whisker and tell him, you know, I was working for you guys while this happened. You know, I pulled myself back up on the trail and hobbled all the way to the end of my delivery still. Maybe they'd help front some of the cost. Make me feel like they valued my work. Appreciated the due diligence and finishing out an order after that. They told me I was the one responsible for me. So now here I am. I got some crumbs for drinks. I slowly limp up and down the trail for a few more crumbs for some more drinks. And I survive. I don't feel like talking much anymore. Yeah. So what you're going to start to see, and the reason I initially excluded this, is because A, there's not really a ton for me to talk about, and B, it really becomes more of a political commentary than a horror game. I mean, sure, it's spooky. You you really do feel like you're vulnerable, very, very vulnerable in this system that they've created. And I do think it is actually complemented by having the characters be animals, both in terms of getting their personality traits across in the animal that they represent, but also in terms of, like, you know, the allegory to human behavior. And actually, it seems like in this universe, they are getting this behavior from human behavior. And even though I... Uh, look, e even though I agree with the messages that are in this game in broad strokes, I, I just didn't really feel like it's part of the channel. Like, it's not the kind of thing that I usually talk about on this channel. But I, I just feel weird leaving out just two games, you know? A note stuck to the door reads, The Shoebox Apartments. Opening soon. Located in the scenic outskirts. The shoebox offers luxury living for an affordable price. For only 5,600 shed a cycle, you too can enjoy a roomy six square inches of my hottest new craze, microburrows. Contact us during Big Light to fill out an application. Please note that applications cost a half cycle's rent. Applications do not guarantee placement within the complex. Fee is non-refundable. Okay, if I paid half a month's rent for an apartment application and didn't get in that apartment, I'm coming back and burning this place down. Just saying. 
One thing I absolutely cannot stand in this life is feeling cheated, and I will totally, totally ruin a whole thing out of spite in that instance. Oh, you're... you're an albino one. You got the glowing red eye and all. They lean lazily on the counter. Obviously young, and extremely bored. They don't seem to notice your approach. You wave your paw a little at them, and they come too. Oh, uh, hi. Are you buying something? Letter for you. They shift nervously, averting their gaze from yours. Uh, what, what do you mean? You hand them the mysterious letter. Look, I don't have anywhere near enough crumbs. Not my problem. Well, if you want to keep your word to them, you're going to have to help. Otherwise, you're in trouble too. I'd say it's definitely your problem. They don't take kindly to people who can't accomplish what they need. I can't afford that tab. But I have a friend that I think can help. Who? Alright, so. You're going to head out of here, take a left. You should see a real small path through the grass. That'll take you to a cliff. Knowing them, there should be an old mouse staring at nothing out there. They know everything there is to know about this place. They'll know what to do about the barkeep. And I know you've got a lot of questions about all this, so I'm sure they can clue you in on what a mess this place is. Here, this is a note explaining everything. Just hand that over. You were given the hastily scrawled note. I'll close up early and meet you over there when I'm done. We'll talk more about what to do. This is exciting. If you say so. It is. Today might just be the red letter day we've been waiting for. If you decide to help my friend. Anyway, I gotta start getting stuff put away here. Go get caught up. Good luck. I noted this the first time I played. I really like the way this character's dialogue is written. Like, you can really get, in just a few sentences, like, the kind of meekness of the character, but also that sort of... what's the word? Not ambition, but rebelliousness. But still, but still very meek, not really willing to push the envelope on their own, but willing to work with those who are doing the big work. And also kind of trying to act tough a little bit in the meantime, like trying to kind of make it my problem. But the tough guy act doesn't really land. Uh... Does this little spot in the grass overlook New Vegas? Alright, what have you got for me, old-timer? Well, hello there, squirt. What can I do you for? Who are you? Me? I'm just an old mouse who settled down. No one special, I assure you. What are you doing? Oh, just reminiscing. These houses are somewhat of a recent development, if you'll pardon an old long whisker of a pun. It used to be forest up to the cliffside, you know. I miss it occasionally. You would too, Squirt. It was such a haven for our kind. Yeah, well anyway, I have a note for you. Oh? Let me have a look. Oh, that poor youngling. Hmm. I suppose you have a lot of questions, don't you? What's going on here? A farce of monumental proportions, Squirt. The felines have swindled us time and again, but what's happening now is by far the worst swindle they've ever wrought. What about the kid? The squabble between that child and the barkeep is nothing compared to what the cats have their paws in. The barkeep is only the beginning, I assure you. Do you understand how a system of control can wrap its mealy tail around a society of intelligent creatures? 
For the fat cats, it's a simple matter of disinformation, smoke screens, and silencing any squeaks of dissidence. A concerted effort to establish complete and utter control of how we perceive reality itself. They've set their paws to creating a hyper-reality in which we find ourselves immersed. A world so doused in the muddied waters of the true and the untrue that the lines between them are inexorably blurred until we can no longer see the water we swim in. After all, if you can't know what is or isn't real, how can you make any meaningful change? Or fight injustice? How do you ever know there's problems within the system to begin with? And those who dare go against the grain find themselves quickly swatted down by the iron paw of totalitarianism. There's a reason our last attempt to overthrow our feckless leaders is called the Final Rebellion. It's a statement of what reality will be, as much as one of what was. We've lost our chance to turn the tide. What happened? Infiltration. Undermining turning us against one another, creating insurmountable walls between us. An external group to turn a hateful eye upon stops one from focusing on the real internal issues, a dastardly plan to blind us with our own hatred. The barkeep was just such a mouse who fell, entranced by the siren song of the blame, a thought movement that placed all the hardships of mousehood squarely on the shoulders of non-mice. Excluding the felines, of course. Anger is far easier to harbor than love. The cats knew that, and exploited it to its fullest. What did they do? Tell me, when was the last time you saw a rat? I've never seen one. There's a reason for that, as there is for all things, one that I'm sure you understand. Originally, this oak stood above all the woods here, a guardian high above the tree line. The fat cats would have those they called lesser beings, with cold calculation, hanged from its branches. The tree of growth, they called it. We shed the weight of their burden upon us as a society to achieve greater heights. Or so they'd have you believe. The barkeep was the grim caretaker of this place, an ancient family home that they had themselves inherited. Eventually, the oak turned in time into an inn, but they couldn't keep it afloat after the issuance of Cheta. But... With the advent of the den, no soul wished to venture this far, especially not for a fee. Desperate and low on Shetta, they turned the oak over to fat cats when they expressed a keen interest in the location. The rats weren't the only undesirables in the eyes of the felines. One group is rarely enough to bear the brunt of such ire for long. Quickly, the oak became a harbor for all sorts of enemies of the establishment. Any who earned their ire began to quietly disappear. For a while, the mice brought here would simply be... adjusted. No one was ever quite the same when they came back. It wasn't until much later we realized that they were making them infertile. That's why you have to stop them. E excuse me? You're an unknown entity here. I've seen you skulking about, trying not to be noticed. You slip in and out of that burrow like a spirit in the night. Going unnoticed seems to be a skill you've honed well, and it's something that could benefit all of Mouse Kind tonight. Easily enough, you could slip into the oak, scale it, and topple the feline patriarch that hides up top silently lording over us. His gaze never falters from this place here. The cat in the tower controls it all, without raising a single paw. But they'd never see it coming. 
You're so meek, so modest in physical stature, after all. Face it, you're the perfect mouse for the job. They've all taken so much from us. It's time we take it back. We can burn away the blight that has plagued this once great society. <laughs> I just want to pay rent. <laughs> rent. That's a good one. Who do you think owns all the land around here? The landlord? No. They're just a patsy. They shake you down for your cheddar? The go-between for whenever things turn ugly. The barkeep's windfall from fat cats was more than enough to snatch up the land the felines had no interest in. Your rent won't ever be a worry again if we can take this first step towards a new tomorrow. I love how I can still insist, why not that kid? They're too loud, too boisterous, too emotionally charged. They couldn't handle themselves together long enough to make it past the security in that oak. Not like you. Fine. <laughs> That's the spirit. First things first. We're gonna need some leverage to get the keys to the fortress of the oak. It may not look like much, but it's nigh impregnable. I have an idea. Go back to the tin can bar. The barkeep always scurries off this time of no light to meet with their... superiors. Behind the bar, on the far side from the entrance, you'll find a false bottom in the last drawer. There, you'll find our bargaining ship. Bring it to me, and we can set in motion a new dawn for Mousekind. I'll head towards the bar shortly after you. I just... need a few more moments here first. After all, who knows how many more I'll have like this, where hope springs eternal in a mouse's chest. Best not to deny an old mouse, long and whisker and brittle a bone, that much. Remain steadfast, Squirt. Yeah. Now, as you can see, this game doesn't really leave a whole lot to me to commentate on. And even though I largely, in broad strokes, agree with the messages in this game, I do find it to be a little bit on the nose. I mean, maybe they're packing it in dense because this is just a demo. I, I just feel like it's a little much a little quickly. Well, I didn't expect you to actually accept that. Sorry, I was eavesdropping. I finished closing the store, and you two were so loud. At any rate, I think they're sending you after... Well, you'll see. I've glimpsed it before. It's beautiful. What is it? I don't want to spoil the surprise. I should probably get out of here before it hits the fan. I think you're on the verge of kicking the hornet's nest, and I don't want to be around for it. I'd rather not be collateral damage. So, I guess... I hope this isn't goodbye. Just a farewell. Until I see you again in the big light. Hopefully we'll both stand a little taller, as mice in control of their own fates for the first time in a long time. By the way, I, uh, shaved a little off the top of tonight's profits when I was counting the till. I know, I know, you're toppling the... <laughs> I forgot about this. You're toppling the... Get, get, for those of you just listening, get ready for this. You're toppling the meowligarchy. But just in case you end up needing to pay your rent somehow. Don't die up there. And I have received... 50 Cheddar! <laughs> I love that graphic that comes up on the screen. Hey there, buddy, are you the barfly or are you the bartender? Oh, hey, yous! Long time no she. Have you... Did you she the barkeep? They just left. No? Oh. Okay. 
do you think they'd mind me snagging myself another d another d uh, from behind the bar? Uh, yeah, about that. Uh, while you're back there, you decide to bring them up to speed on what you've learned about the Oak. You assume they won't remember much of this anyway. While unsure of how much of a paw the barkeep has in all this, they want to believe you regarding the rest of the tale. As you mention the bargaining piece, the barfly's eyes light up. They rush to the other side of the bar, open the drawer, remove the false bottom, and set the object on the counter. The Lord of the Hundreds. A pungent odor fills your nostrils. A scent you've never before experienced. You feel your senses heighten. The barfly seems to sober up almost instantly. One of the few pieces of edible cheese left in this world. Anything else gets pounded into cheddar immediately by the cats. Barkeep's the only one I know of who still has a piece of contraband like this. They showed me it once, when they were a little drunk. I guess it's some kind of family keepsake or something, pawed down through generations of mice. Never really thought much of it until now. I guess your story does check out. Felines wouldn't let something like this slip by them for so long without good reason. You ever wonder what cheese tasted like before we turned it into crumbs? Before we used it to trade material goods and labor. When it was just a simple pleasure we enjoyed with one another. Before subjugation. They trail off into silence. Drifting into their thoughts. A strange impulse fills you. Snout to tail. Their words echo in your mind. Why was it taken from you and your kind? Surely there'd be no harm in just... Let's try some. Oh, really? Yeah? I guess you're already pissing them off, so... Might as well taste what our ancestors used to relish. Hope it aged well. Here. You're given a piece of the Lord of the Hundreds. As soon as it hits your tongue, you feel the room begin to shift. Ooh. Uh, my screen is taking up most of my field of vision, so that was extremely disorienting. A strange sensation overtakes your form. Your corporeal body detaches from your spirit. A higher existence comes into focus here within this moment. Your thoughts drift to currency. What use is it? In the stream of emotions, you feel peace. Your rent no longer looms overhead, demanding your subservience to a greater system that wishes not for your best interests, nor to care for you. The taste still lingers in your mouth simply sublime. Eons of cheese eating wash over you. The natural state of things. Your heritage. Why have we let them take it? What is it blocking you out of the past? It certainly isn't a law of nature. There's more of us than them. We outnumber them a million to one. Why is it that we've yet to converge? To take on the upper hand? Why have we been so scared? They shouldn't take from us any longer. They can't. Not today. Not anymore. They won't. Did you feel that? I, I felt something. It's like something woke within me. <laughs> they actually highlighted woke. Uh, there's on the nose and then there's... <laughs> uh, something woke within me. And I don't think it's going back to sleep. You should uh, take this. 
and get out of here. You're given the Lord of the Hundreds. And I think I need to go lay down. That was... a lot. Yeah, it certainly was. Good luck up there. I think you might be the only one who can change all of this. Mouse kind deserves to be free. Okay, back to the old guy. I see two silhouettes here. As if I don't already know what happens. And that sound was actually quite horrifying. You. I know what you stole from the bar. Who do you think you are? You're coming with me. You pissed off the wrong cat. And that revolution is dead in the water. I was almost getting excited there, but there it goes. Thank you for playing the demo of Until Big Light. The application will now close. Effigy. For real this time. Explore an abandoned prison moon that has been overrun by a cult of former inmates in this fast-paced retro FPS. You. A traveler, yes? You have scent of foreign worlds on you. Smelled that before, I have, once. Another traveler. When? I cannot say. All blurs together now. Like... soup. Ah, you seek that one. I cannot help. I'm sorry. If she went this way, through the valley, she's probably dead. Prison on top of a mountain. Prisoners put on masks, started killing. Was that before or after? I'm sorry. Very soupy. Point is, the other one probably dead. Oh, but maybe you go too. You get dead too. Then it will be like finding her. Everyone happy. Oh, we got a glass half full town kind of person here. Glad I helped. Goodbye. Ah, it's like tech support. The Valley of the Faithful. And as that action-y music kicks in, uh, you'll start to see that this is very much taking inspiration from the classic 3D shooters of the 90s, such as Quake and Wolfenstein 3D. Die, and now we kill these enemies, we can get ammo and health from them. And the reason I initially skipped this, I mean, I do wish I had just kept my original playthrough, but the reason I wasn't going to include it is because it just... You know, it, it, it doesn't really have a dark twist or anything like that, and when I was thinking of this in the context of these are all going to be horror games, I didn't really have much to say about it besides the fact that it kind of has this sort of bleak, creepy vibe in a vague sort of sense, but the whole way through, it really is just this shooter, and so e even on the second playthrough, I'm probably going to be cutting a lot out. Uh, sometimes these melee enemies will show up. Uh, you do have plenty of time to just kind of kite them and kill them at your, at your leisure. The difficulty is when there's a bunch of them coming at you in close quarters, and there's also someone shooting at you. There's one. Ah, there's two. And now there's one. Now at a couple points in the game, we're called upon to grab the power orb and bring it to... Uh, well, we got to bring this one back to the elevator, but what is this? A, a Vikram Zeta Red automatic rifle in battle-worn condition. A common rifle among militia and security forces throughout the galaxy. Bang, bang, bang! Ah! I don't think I actually picked this weapon up the first time around, believe it or not. I remember finding ammo for it, but I don't remember there being a straight-up assault rifle. Now the question is, is this valid as a straight-up replacement to the to the pistol, or is it something that is going to be more situational? Because I'm having a pretty good time of it right now. It's something that does damage and is very accurate, which is how I tend to play games. Alright, move forward. 
And beyond here, there's not really going to be a whole lot that I have to say. I mean, granted, for what it is, it is actually pretty enjoyable to play. The movement is nice and smooth, and once you figure out how the enemies work, you know, the arsenal does really complement what's going on here. And I think this acts as a save point. But, you know, there's just not really anything all that spooky about it, and... You know, I, I don't have any, I don't have much to commentate on here. Yep. Ah, uh, yeah. Seeing those particle effects is actually really, really satisfying. When there's two of them standing right next to each other, and you really just light them up. All right, what about you guys? Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, it, it's, it's like it's it, it completely feels like one of those old style games. But it's just got these little things going for it that take advantage of modern hardware in ways that old games wouldn't be able to, like having these large draw distances and... Hello? What's up with this one in particular? I like having these draw distances and particle effects. Okay, that's strafe, strafe, strafe. Strafe, strafe, strafe. The melee ones remind me of Tusken Raiders. If I remember rightly... Yeah, there's a checkpoint on our left, and there's someone else to talk to on our right. Now, one thing this is kind of interesting is that it's it's got NPCs that we can actually interact with, which is something that you would never, ever see in those old-style shooters. So it kind of makes me wonder why they've decided to include these things. I mean, I guess it's nice world-building. A lot better than leaving all the story to be told through data pads and notes. Ah, it's you again. Wait, sorry, mate, my mistake. You look just like her. Well, you're new around here, then. Welcome to our little pocket of hell. The prisoner's on top of the cliff. Me? I'd just as soon stay here. It's holy ground up there. Which is to say, they get a bit feisty if you trespass. But the blood on your suit tells me you've been acquainted. Me? Well, I try to make the best of a bad situation. I'm gonna do what I do best. Stand behind a desk and try to sell things. But I could never figure out, will you sell things to me? I was not able to figure out, yeah. Okay, so it's, you go through the same dialogue again. So you're clearly a shopkeep, but a shopkeep that I can't buy from in a video game? What blasphemy is this? More likely, I'm just not able to understand something, or it's just not present in the demo. Okay, now here I am, nailing this elevator, uh, which is really, really good, because I accidentally uh, managed to leave myself behind on my first playthrough. So, this is like the abridged version. And here we find ourselves at the prison itself. You know, it does actually craft kind of a nice world. A very harsh one. Like, you can, you can tell this was constructed by a society that definitely didn't value prisoners' rights. I mean, sure, the escaped prisoners themselves are horrifying, but it kind of makes you wonder how much of that is their fault to begin with and how much of that was done to them. Yeah, I remember there's another NPC to talk to here. Come to pay your respects, have you, son? It's a smart choice. They don't take kindly to blasphemers. I, for one, make regular offerings in the courtyard up ahead. It's a royal pain, but they leave me alone. If you're looking for offerings, I've heard some mutterings of a good one in those mud pyramids they built on top of the valley. You must have seen them on your way up. Yeah, I believe that's the bone fragment that I've already received, so I don't have to worry about it. I just have to fight my way through and storm the castle. I don't know how to feel about games where you can actually see the incoming fire and dodge it. I think it works just fine here. But, of course, it has its place in certain games and not in others. I feel like for this, what this is, the Quake or Doom-style shooter, 
it works fine because it gives you more incentive to strafe to really keep in motion while you're playing. Oh, I forgot that falls way down. Oh, jeez. Okay, uh, where... Uh, I remember getting caught in here. Yeah, I jumped down into my own jail cell, but I don't remember how I got out. I remember being stuck in here for a little bit. Uh, oh, there we go. Eh, not a very good jail cell, is it? If that is indeed what it's intended to be. Uh, maybe now is where I test whatever this thing is? Uh, it did something. Oh boy, that is cool. That's actually a round that reflects all over the room. That's kind of neat. Ow! Die. Nice little spin you did there. And if I remember rightly, yes. This is where we're going to have to do a little bit of plat platforming to get up to the other panel up there. And we need to deliver that power orb to it. But we're on a timer, so we're going to have to make it quick and not screw up our jumps. Take a shortcut up this way. Eugh. No time for falling. Eugh. Nope, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No! Ah. I screwed it up the first time on the other one as well. Alright. You really have, like, no time to spare. Doesn't help that it's just a little bit floaty, but there we go. And now we can open the door. Death view. And death view as well. Oop. Yep. Nope. You know what I just realized? Did I finish playing this? Because I can't actually remember how this ends. For some reason, I remembered it ending at that door. I don't remember what all this looks like at all. Ah, and the force field is now open, meaning I can proceed into their hallowed courtyard. Uh, but what do I do here? Oh, I probably have to place something in the bowl. Yes, make offering. Your offering is accepted. Ah, that is some next level forgiveness after I slaughtered basically all of your followers. Or at least I hope that's basically all of your followers. Ah, I made the jump. But what is this? As we descend deeper into the prison, it's like... It's like there's almost some kind of, like, veins or something on the wall. What is going on down here? I don't think that cult became a cult due to their harsh conditions. I think there's something under this prison that may be influencing them. Or is this a prison at all? Okay, there. it looks like there's a little bit of a gap that I can maybe try to double jump onto. I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to make it! But apparently it didn't matter. Okay, continuing to slide down. Ah. Oh. And the ceiling of that cavern was so high up we couldn't even see it. There, there's a whole cavern underneath the prison. There's definitely something more going on here. Oh, I'm so glad I finished that. Ah, now I'm starting to see why it's in this collection. Yeah, so that was Effigy, uh, more or less uh, pretty much a faithful adaptation of a 90s shooter, uh, and a pretty good one at that. I mean, I did somewhat enjoy the combat, even if it was a little bit basic. You know, as something like Doom shows us, there's nothing wrong with a simple, enjoyable experience, and that's what this was, with a little tinge of the unknown at the end, and I really like that. And at last, the final game in the Haunted PS1 2020 demo disc, Insomnio. A collection of five different experiences attempting to recreate my dreams as a game. Oh, we've certainly saved something very interesting for last. 
Also, <laughs> this is getting kind of recursive at the moment. Kind of like a series of small vignettes within a series of small vignettes. Uh, let's try it out. Oh, look at that. This menu background is like we're seeing some panicked scene, but we can't make out the details because it's almost like we're viewing it through the pores in a screen. Or like a sack that's been placed over someone's head. Oh, and I really like that. Wake up as the option for shutting the game off and dream to play. One. Train. Oh, things are a little more visible now, but we're still viewing it as if through that screen door effect. Oh, wow, that's that's a little bit disorienting. When I step from side to side, my view tilts, and it almost, from my perspective, it's like the world is tilting, uh, almost simulating that dreamlike difficulty in walking. I don't know if anyone else gets that. In my dreams, I cannot move at all. I always have to try and, like, crawl or grab onto the wall and try to push myself along. And, and I always curse the fact that I can't really move. Like, I always perceive it as if this is something, some condition that's always affected me. Hello, sir? Sit down. Uh, yeah, where do I sit down? Hang on, wait. I got a pixel hunt. I can control where this train is headed, you know. And right on into the next one. I don't know how much I'll be able to comment on these in the moment, but I am really, really digging this. I I'm going to have a lot to say about this one, but it might come at me too fast to not save it until the end. I'll try my best. So these are giving me these vague ideas which sort of connect to their surroundings, but don't make any logical sense. I can certainly see where the dream inspiration comes from. And in fact, I suppose these are direct adaptations of dreams. Oh, hello, J Downloader. So here, it's carry these toothpicks for me, will you? So it's like I've been given this task by this unseen presence. And the only way I know how to accomplish this task, even if I don't understand it, is to follow the trail in the direction where I think this being might be. I actually, I, I love that train dream because you sit down and there's a passenger staring pensively out the window and he turns to you and says, I can control where this train is headed, you know. And it's delivered as a simple matter of fact statement, but they've actually managed to put across how weirdly ominous that feels. Like that almost elevates this person to like God level. Like, they're not only in control of the train, but in control of, like, your fate. The kind of thing that isn't really portrayed by anything that's going on. The kind of thing that will only make sense to you. And yet you just understand this whole greater context in the dream itself. Now what is this? Is this one of those crystal skulls I'm always hearing about? Hello. And just like that, it's gone. Number three, hotel. These aren't just recollections of dreams. These are almost like the way you flow from one dream to the next within a single sleep session. If we look down there, we can see those poles from before. Like we're now in a castle or something, or I suppose a hotel, right above the forest we were just in. So it's like, in that stream of consciousness, there's a loose connection from one idea to the next. OK, 
Okay, where am I going? Oh. There's no door and I can't climb through the window. I'm gonna have to crawl through this hole in the wall. Oh, that is so claustrophobic. Somehow it's made even worse by this screen door effect. Actually, now that I think of it, kind of similar to leaning too close to a TV screen. There's something that makes it feel so much more claustrophobic having that distorted view more than a few feet in front of me. I don't think I'm going to be able to crouch all the way down there. Can I stand up here? I can, but it doesn't do me much good. Getting ever darker as I climb further into this area. Which begs the question, what am I doing here and how did I get here to begin with? Is there something down there? There's like a round shape at the end of that. Something's moving in that. There's like yellow particle effects. Oh, it is somehow getting so dark. Even though it seemed like I could see all the way through. <laughs> Four. Okay. Can't enter these doors. I guess I just have to keep following the hallway. Somebody was murdered in this room. Uh, it's like four, trapped. It's like these ideas are... I think this might be the first dream-inspired game I've played that actually does a really good job of delivering those thoughts that you would have in a dream. Like, the ones that you would just intuitively understand without anything in the dream itself actually leading you towards that intuition. It is, in its purest form, an intuition. Like here, there's a sense of anxiety. Look how far down that water is. And it's like I'm forced to walk along this edge where it feels like there's all these obstacles in my way and I might trip, but I can't take the way that gets me further from the ledge because I'll just slide down and over. There's like a real fear of having to kind of walk the tightrope. Do I have to climb down into whatever this machine is? Is something coming out of it? What's in there? I, I don't know whether to get closer or back away. I'll get closer, I suppose. Oh, I do not like doing that. I feel like the second I get close, something's gonna... ...come bursting out. Part 5. Teeth. This is really coming at me very rapid fire. And now there's no ambient sound at all, save for my own footsteps. I stand corrected. Uh, these large blast doors, it's like this place is a prison or something. Or like a minotaur's labyrinth. Is something going to be unleashed as I walk further along? I can't help but think about how if that door opens and something enters the passageway, I'll be trapped. More of these blast doors. God, I, 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 I just know there's got to be something in here with me. They've gone for- Oh, they're like grinding into each- Oh, oh! That is so unpleasant. 
quid significant? Oh, that's... What I was seeing wasn't a perspective of some panicked individual. I, I was seeing the teeth clamping down. Oh, I am going to have so much to say about this game in the future. I think this is going to be one of my big inspirations for Dream Logic in games. I am so glad. You know, the last couple of recording sessions, I was getting a little bit kind of, uh, I was getting a little bit fatigued on this demo disc, but I am so glad I stuck it through the d to the end. But I am also glad I took a break, because otherwise I might not have come into it with that refreshed attitude to really appreciate this for what it was. I really love the rapid-fire, kind of drive-by nature of those individual vignettes. And it seemed just enough like there was some little bit of a connecting idea between them that it could all conceivably be happening in the same sleep session. It's like how dreams kind of retain a central idea even as the characters and premise and locations are shifting all around you. We end up in a different dream where we're kind of trying to avoid falling over and we find this claustrophobic sort of machinery that I was sort of getting the impression that it wanted me to climb into, but there's all kinds of unseen horrors inside, kind of playing off of the claustrophobia of the previous area of the hotel. But the thing I loved most of all is how, more than any other dream emulation media I've tried, it actually gets across those intuitive feelings that you get from dreams through those narrations. So for example, as you're walking down those hotel hallways, you hear the narration, someone was murdered in this room. And with that, you get such an ominous feeling from the space, even though nothing has happened there, even though you haven't seen anything to indicate that you should be afraid, all of a sudden this is the scariest place in the world. I mean, because it's comprised of your own thoughts, a dream can put so much meaning into literally anything. You could be brought to tears by the sight of a cloth on the ground in a way that makes so much sense at the time, but that you'd have a very difficult time explaining afterwards. Or you can be in a crowd of people and look at one particular person and just have the most immense fear of them for no reason that you can discern. And we kind of saw that with the passenger on the train. He turns and delivers this total nothing statement. And it just elevates him in such a way where he's suddenly so menacing. And yet he hasn't done anything. He hasn't even said anything scary. There's nothing wrong with his appearance. Ah, I am so inspired by this. I guess I'll just give my outro for this short series here, since it's a little easier to hear myself think than in the actual demo disc menu. But basically, yeah, I I'm so glad that I played this. It was such a nice little variety show, in a lot more ways than just the faux PS1 aesthetic, because in my opinion, really only a few of these really needed the faux PS1 aesthetic. And this wasn't even one of them, I mean, I'm not saying it took away from them per se, but only a few really utilized it in the core concept of what they are. More than that, I, I was actually able to appreciate them for the sheer variety of their takes on horror. It was really refreshing how one moment I could be playing like an old style adventure game and the next an FPS and one a short POV experience of a nightmare. And you know, it seems so obvious, because horror, of course, is a genre that's no stranger to anthologies, but somehow, I just never thought of doing it in the form of games. But of course now, in this age of an explosion in great indie content, and, and even free indie content, it's just ripe for bringing this kind of idea into the medium of gaming. But anyway, if you stuck through this entire series, thank you so much for watching. You were definitely rewarded, I think, with this last game. And if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to do that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. And as always, 
I will see you in the next one.